Good morning. You know the story this guy tells his friend that I hired in my company a professional warrior. And uh, I don't have to worry anymore. It's his job. He works for me full time. He has to ca worry about all my problems. So his friend says, how much do you pay this guy? So they pay him $150,000 a year. He says, $150,000 a year? Your company only makes 100000 profit a year. How are you going to pay him 150000 He says, that's his problem. Let him worry about it. I don't have to worry about it anymore. In this week's Parsha, we have the Mitzvah of Shemitah. The Mitzvah of Shemitah is just like we have the seventh day of the week of Shabbat, where we rest and we don't do any work. The Torah says that in the land of Israel, that every seventh year is Shemitah. It's the sabbatical year. Hence, we have the idea of a sabbatical where the farmer is not allowed to work for an entire year and not allowed to pl uh, plant or reap any crop for an entire year. And here the Torah sa says, if you're going to ask, what are we going to eat? We're not going to work our fields. How are we going to survive? So God says in the parasha, don't worry. I will give an extra blessing in the sixth year that there will be extra crop to carry you through the seventh year. Now, we know there are 613 commandments in the Torah. The Torah never tells us, and what's if you wonder, what's if you ask? The Torah tells you what you have to do. It doesn't get into the human psyche and the fears and the worries and the questions that you're going to have. The Torah doesn't say, when it says, give tzedakah, and what's if you say, if I give charity, I won't have enough for my family. So it doesn't get into that. You have to give tzedakah, period. You figure it out on your own. There's only one other time where the Torah goes into the question in your head. And that's in the parsha of Akev in Devarim, when it talks about conquering the land of Israel, the Torah says, you'll say in your heart, meaning in your thoughts, the nations are too big, too powerful. How are we going to conquer the land of Israel? So the Torah reassures us once again, don't be afraid of them. Remember what God did in Egypt. He took you out with great miracles. Everything will work out well. These are the only two instances where the Torah addresses your inner fears, your inner worries, your inner concerns, and says, I know what you're thinking. How am I going to live in the seventh year? I know what you're thinking. How am I going to conquer the land? Don't worry. I got your back. You're taken care of. I'll give you a crop for the sixth year to carry the seventh, and I'll help you succeed like I took you out of Egypt. And perhaps what the Torah is telling us is that, you know, there's the old adage, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. But sometimes, as the adder says, you fear your fears. You say, something's wrong with me. Maybe I don't have faith because I'm worried. I shouldn't be worried. Why am I worried? I should have pure faith. So the Torah says, it's okay to worry. It's okay to have a fear. It's normal to wonder, what am I going to eat for the seventh year? Everyone worries about livelihood. It's a human nature to worry about your livelihood. Same thing with survival. How am I going to survive against these mighty nations? You wouldn't be human if you weren't afraid. Courage doesn't mean that you don't have fear. Courage means that your faith is stronger than your fears. And you have courage because you have faith. And your faith is more powerful than your fears. And therefore, the Torah says, it's okay to have questions, to have fears. But the question is, when I reassure you that I'll provide enough crop, or I reassure you that I'll conquer the land, is your faith stronger than your fear? And does your faith reassure you and give you the confidence and the courage? God doesn't expect us to be superhuman and not have legitimate questions and fears when we face challenges in life. That's human, but we have to rise above them. Someone once said that the word fear is an acronym for four words. False evidence appearing real. Why is that the case? Because when we make decisions, we're looking at the evidence that we can see with our eyes. But that's not all the facts. God has a whole bigger perspective that we can't see. So we're making conclusions based on what we have available to us. But Hashem has a greater perspective, and therefore we have to trust Hashem's perspective and realize He has the whole set of evidence, and based on those criteria, He tells you there's nothing to fear, and therefore you trust Him, and as King David says, cast your burdens upon Hashem, and He will sustain you.